I don't know if Jim Brown ever had a long-term contract with the Cleveland Browns, but whatever he was paid, the Cleveland Browns got themselves a bargain. Because in a world where superlatives are often overused, Jim Brown was clearly the best. The subject of our kickoff report. In a game played by an always changing cast of highly competitive men, it was almost unthinkable the way Jimmy Brown totally dominated the position of fullback for almost a decade. Drafted number one out of Syracuse by the Cleveland Browns in 1957, he immediately led the league in rushing, as he would for eight of the nine years he played. He ran like no one else ever had, with a deceptive, seemingly effortless gliding motion, a thrust that propelled him through the line and into the open field. He had different speeds, different paces, gears he could shift at will. And gang tackling was the only sure way to stop him. Incredibly, he averaged 104 yards a game over his entire career, rewriting the record book along the way. He was always different, always the same. A blend of all the essentials. Straightaway power, speed, balance, boldness, strength, stamina, and courage. He never missed a game. Two simple statistics tell it all. In the history of professional football, no one has ever carried the ball for more yardage or scored more touchdowns than Jimmy Brown. Cleveland's perfect fullback. Another all-time great running back was Earl Campbell, who is prominently featured in this video. Watch as he cuts through the Seahawks defense for 202 total yards in this super exciting 1981 game. Let's get after it. Especially on the kickoff and kickoff return team, as you look at the receivers, McCullum had a big game last year against the Oilers. Four catches, 80 yards, and two touchdowns. First and 10, Seattle on their own 27-yard line. Largent in motion left. And again, is to David Hughes, who is making his first National Football League start. Second round draft choice this year out of Boise State. Sherman Smith and David Hughes, the split backs. Zorn back the pass on second and ten. A little screen pass out to Hughes. Got some running room and some blockers. Finds a little bit of daylight and takes advantage of it. Across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Third and one. Ball at the 36 of Seattle. David Hughes gets Whoa. it. And may have gotten enough for the first down. Play action fake. Zorn out to large and has got a first down in midfield. First and 10, Seattle at the Houston 39. Zorn to throw. And has got number 86, Mike Tice, over the middle. Daryl Hunt there to meet him. And Tice, a big target. Seahawks out of the eye. Zorn gives the Sherman Smith the tailback, and he finds some room on the right side. This is a game-used helmet worn by running back Sherman the Tank Smith, who ran the ball on the preceding play. He was a big, tall running back drafted out of Miami of Ohio and had a solid eight-year NFL career. He was a hard-nosed runner, which led to his nickname, the Tank, and he was also a dependable receiver. His best season was 1979 when he scored 15 touchdowns and was ranked as the 6th best fantasy football running back per pro football reference. There's a big man in the Seattle Seahawks scheme of things. When he went down last year, it really stunned the Seahawks offense off that sprint draw. He was a college quarterback out of Miami of Ohio, and he can... Throw the ball, he can catch it, he runs with authority, has about a 4.5 yard average for his career. Last year, missed the entire season. Seattle second and five at the Houston 13. Sweet to Smith. He's got David Hughes out in front as well as number 64, Ron Essing. Herrera on the year 4 for 7 in the field goal department. His long 52 yards. So he's certainly capable. Not opposed to doing something funny out of this formation. From 40 yards out, Efren Herrera's kick is up and it is good. So Seattle has once again drawn first blood here in the Astrodome. First and 10 at their own 21. They give us the Campbell. Who else? And the Tyler Rose drags about four or five Seattle Seahawks with him. Second and five. Stabler will throw. 
He's got Burrow. And a first down. Second down and 15 ball to Houston 30. Again, Stabler will throw. Out to Campbell. Got some running room, but Michael Jackson, 55, was there, as was number 27, Gregory Johnson. He's on the sidelines shotgun. right now. Third 11, shotgun formation. We have not seen that this year for the Oilers. Whoa! Bad snap. Stabler is lucky to get it off. <laughs> Azure Armstrong, number 39, a utility man for these Oilers, made a sensational grab of... You'll see the fair catch in the West Stabler, who makes a great reception, I might add. And dodges Hardy. Whoa, what a catch. What a catch by Armstrong. Elijah Pitts, the offense. Third and six at the 39. Stabler again out of the shotgun. Intended for Dave oh. Casper and almost picked off by number 42, Keith Simpson. Seattle will put the ball in play at their own 25-yard line, first and 10. David Hughes and Sherman Smith, who left the game earlier, he's now back in. They're the running backs. Fake to Hughes. Sherman Smith has got Ted Washington beaten. Open field across the 50-yard line. Finally, number 37, Mike Reinfeldt, brings a halt to his odyssey. First and 10 at the Houston 32. High formation. Margin in motion right. Flip to Sherman Smith. He's got it. He's, He's got, got a lot of room outside. At the Houston 17, Zorn will throw. Hughes is wide open, touchdown. David Hughes beat number 50, Daryl Hunt, and David Hughes, the number two draft choice out of Boise State this year, has his first National Football League score of his career. So much for the raised eyebrows in Seattle as to why this young man was drafted. He offers more speed out of the backfield, and as you can see, an excellent receiver. That's not an easy ball to catch, Mike. You and I both know that, going straight away from the football. Carrera now on the field to attempt the extra point. He is perfect thus far this year. 8-4-8. Eight, eight. Carrera's kick is up, making 9 for 9. As you see the scoring drive of the Seahawks, Mr. Hughes, his first touchdown ever. High formation, Burrow and Renfro are wide to the right. Houston's ball at the Seattle 40, first and 10. High formation gives to Campbell, a lot of room inside. Bangs it for five yards to the 34-yard line. Fourth and one. Everybody's up and on their feet here. Big first quarter play for the Oilers. Oh. Burrow wide open at the five. Touchdown. on the touchdown a broken play obviously meant to get nothing but the first down the coverage is broken by Seattle Burroughs uncovered Harris tries to make the desperation tackle Rich eight for eight he is perfect again So a big touchdown play. Ken Stabler to double zero. Ken Burrow and the Oilers are back in business. It's 10-7 Seahawks. We'll be back. Third and seven for Seattle at the 38. Zorn in trouble. Has to flush from the pocket. Across the 40. Jesse Baker was there to, along with Greg Bingham. At second base. No defense in the league has holds the uh, quarterback accountable, and Zorn is the second leading rusher on the Seattle Seahawks so far this season. Campbell. Stabler. Quick Here give to Earl Campbell, first down. Joe Norman drags him down. You just can't say enough about this guy. 37 carries last week. Look at him get up through that hole. Leon Gray with a good block. And he's always got his shoulders going up the field. 
Second and 10. That's a Houston 21. 12.50 to go here in the second quarter. The Oilers trail the Seahawks 10-7. Earl outside and dragged out of bounds. Kenny Burrows and Mike Renfro are wide to the left. Rip out to Earl Campbell. John Harris is right there. John Harris, who has had an outstanding year at right safety for the Seahawks, read that play perfectly, and Houston will have to punt. We have 11.43 to go here in the second quarter. The Seahawks on top, 10-7. When I'm not making music with the Charlie Daniels Band, you'll find me here at home in Tennessee. And where you find me, you'll find my skull. I just take a little pinch and put it between my cheek and gum, and it sure feels good. In fact, I think going smokeless is the only way to go. And my place here? <laughs> That's something I just can't get too much of. Enjoy tobacco without lighting up. Try school, Copenhagen, or Happy Days. A pinch is all it takes. the big interception and puts Houston in business on the Seattle 29. Flip to Campbell. And Great he is play. mother. Joe Norman shot through along with Michael Jackson on the tackle. Stabler in the shotgun. Ooh. That didn't work. <laughs> so Ronnie much. Coleman was the ball carrier. So much for the shotgun. This is a Dallas play. Trying to show run off the shotgun. Good catch by Stabler once again in Kazungi. The reason more teams don't put it into their offensive philosophy, it is hard to coordinate that center snap. Not many centers can do it. And as you can see, the Oilers shotgun has a few kinks in it yet. I wonder why they take Earl Campbell out in a shotgun situation and give the ball to Ronnie Cam uh, Ronnie Coleman. Shotgun again. Armstrong and Coleman the backs again. Stabler will throw. Looking for Kenny Burrow deep. Good play. Outstanding play now. Number 26, Kerry Justin. Seahawks lead 10-7 here in the second quarter. They have the ball at the Houston at their own 19. Large and in motion. Whoops. McCollum and Greg Bingham on the spot made the interception. Mike, the amazing thing about that play is that Greg Bingham was 50 yards down the field. Greg Bingham is a guy who didn't receive a lot of accolades, but he was a terrific inside linebacker for 12 years in the NFL, all with the Oilers. He started 173 out of 175 regular season games and had 21 interceptions for 279 yards, which indicates his athletic agility and ability to run after the catch. Small for an inside linebacker at 6'1", 227 pounds, he was an anchor on that Oilers defense. It was a fake into the line of scrimmage, something made famous a couple of weeks ago by the New York Jets. Watch this. Sherman Smith into the line, back to Zorn. He has to avoid a pass rusher, and that destroys the timing of the play. McCullum waits for the ball. He should have tried to come back for it, but Bingham 50 yards downfield on the interception. Quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams. Stabler throwing it first and 10 to Earl Campbell over the left side. Skirts past one man. He's got the first down and near midfield. At the ball is spotted at the 48-yard line. Mano Tuiasa Sopo drags him down. A gain of 14 yards by Earl Campbell on that pass reception from Kenny Stabler. There you see our score with 8-11 in the second quarter, 10-7. That is Campbell's longest reception of the year. Houston first down at their own 49. 
gives the Campbell behind Tim Wilson. He bangs it into Seattle territory. Stabler's stats on the day, 6 for 10 and 65 yards, certainly an improvement over last week. Second and 10 at the 40, give to Campbell. Rolls his way for 8 yards, down to the 32, 33-yard line. Joe Norman was there, and Keith Butler, number 53. Third down, 3 at the 33. 6-10 to go here, second quarter. Campbell so slow getting up. the ball resting but not for long as the give is to Campbell cuts it back inside and breaks two tackles Campbell gets the call again third and one for Houston They bring in Angelo Fields. Look at the driving power in this guy's legs. Just splits two tacklers. Oh, boy. Stabler gives to Carroll Campbell. Campbell very close to that end zone. Second and less than a yard. Campbell, Campbell touchdown. Number 34 banging over the right side of the Seattle line. You notice he's the only running back in the backfield. Wrenches kick hits the upright. presents fantastic finishes 1970 Tom Dempsey will try to do the impossible kick a 63 yard field goal Joe Scarpetti gets the ball down Dempsey caught it solid and it's it's good Tom Dempsey has just kicked a 63 yard field goal with no time left on the clock the Saints beat the we have three minutes and 34 seconds remaining here in the third quarter in the Astrodome with the Oilers hold a 14 to 10 lead over Seattle. Oilers have the ball at the 28 yard line, first and 10. Ken Burrow in the slot. Renfro wide to the right, eye formation for Houston. Give to Campbell, up the middle. Bangs his way for three or four yards. Mike White, number 70, the first man to stop Campbell's charge. He ran right over Mike White. Mike White 
when he was with the Bengals, was considered one of the strongest guys on the team. Watch the impact here. Shoulder to shoulder on Mike White, folds him back like he weighs about 205 pounds. Campbell at 235, if that's true. Mike White at 265. Second and four. Give again to Campbell. Uh, there's a final <laughs> score now. Kansas City has shot up at 27 to nothing. I cannot believe it. You what think Al Davis isn't going crazy? What a collapse. Campbell's got the first down. Look at that. How many games did you say he had gone over 100 this yards? This is now his 31st time in 52 games that Amazing. he has gone over the 100-yard mark. Slip not appeared in the second half with a sprained ankle in the first half. Campbell, second and two, first down into Seattle secondary again. John Harris, 44, makes the stop. First and ten at the Seattle 36-yard line. Oilers threatening. They lead by four here in the third quarter. Stabler to throw. Underneath to Mike Renfro. And close again to the first down. Keith Butler makes the tackle. Second and one. Campbell again has the first down. Bumble. Bumble the ball, but Seattle has come up with it. Gregory Johnson, number 27, a rookie out of Oklahoma State, is the man who is at the bottom of the pile and appears to be on top of the pigskin. I'll tell you, we never realized golf was such a tough game. Hey, it's a lot easier hitting a quarterback than a little white ball. So us Linksters drink light beer from Miller. Not just because light tastes great, but because it's got a third less calories than a regular beer. And it's less filling. And you can't afford to get filled up when you're out there trying to get birdies. Yeah, those things move awfully fast. <laughs> light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. When you carry the offensive load as much as Earl Campbell does, sometimes this is bound to happen. Watch 79 come in from the side of your screen. The ball is kind of hopping out of Campbell's grasp, and then Jacob Green of the Seahawks hits the ball, and it's loose, and Gregory Johnson on a recover. Not quite as high, and Roaches will get a chance to field it at his 46. Look out, look Changes out. Direction. Flag down. They'll bring it back. Will not count. Flag down on the field. 41-yard punt. 54-yard return for naught. I imagine pushing in the back by a Houston Oiler. Which we have seen on many occasions this afternoon. Certainly got the fans up and standing, though. Watch the catch. He goes to the left, and all of a sudden the pickup, the picket line is set up over here, and nobody touches him from that point on. And the Oilers spend a great deal of time. Elijah Pitts, former running back at the Green Bay Packers, responsible for all these return teams, done an excellent job. But just one mistake in judgment by Houston Oilers, pushing from the back, as Eddie Biles said, and they bring it back. Gets the call one more time. Third and two for Houston. Again, again to Campbell. He's got the first down. Drags Terry Justin with him into Seattle territory. Stabler will throw on first and ten. Has to hurry it up, but Renfro has got to try to shake loose. Ten for 16, 98 yards, one touchdown. I may be mistaken, but I don't believe uh, Seattle has a sack yet today. Second and three at the Seattle 40. Earl Campbell on the day, 146 yards. A year ago at this time, after six games, he had 402. He already has 650 yards and is ahead of his pace of last year when he went over 1,900. Interesting. First game versus L.A. Campbell in a split-back situation at 11 carries for 12 yards. From the I formation with Tim Wilson in there, he had 16 carries, 116 yards. Defensive line will have to buckle up and hold tight here. Fourth quarter just underway. Hawks trail by four. Stabler throws. First and ten. Cut. Pass first. Touchdown. Touchdown. First catch.
But you see the deception somewhat. The fake to Campbell up the middle holds the linebackers. And then the snake puts good arc on the ball. Over 26. Kerry Justin for six points. His first catch of the day for a touchdown. His first touchdown of 1981. Fritch on the field to attempt the extra point. It is up. It is perfect. He is perfect. 11 for 11 right now. We have 14.54 to go here in the Astrodome. The fans are going wild. Oilers lead 21-10. Doris, Ken Drew, Jesse Baker, Ken Kennard up front for the Oilers. Gorn on first and 10. Finds John Sawyer, the tight end, but only for about four yards. Vernon Perry with excellent coverage. And Seattle has the ball second and five at the 40. Sherman Smith. Stutter stepping his way for two or three yards. Oilers signaling fumble. Yeah, but the guys in the striped shirts have not signaled fumble. Houston ball. A costly turnover at the most inopportune time. Seahawks trail by 11, trying to get back in the ball game. But watch what happens here. Mike Stensrud seems to put his head in there, and he jars Sherman Smith so much the ball is now on the ground. Jesse Baker on the recovery. Houston on the ball at the Seattle 42. Give us a Campbell. Drags quick. 26 carries Justin with him. Stabler has had an interception free day. Gives again to Campbell. And Leon Gray, Angelo Field, David Carter, Ed Fisher, Motown's doing an excellent job of opening up daylight for Earl Campbell. Carry Justin again on the stop. 31 carries, 163 yards. You know what his personal, personal record is for carries, Mike? 38. He may break it today. There's still 12.34 left. Number 55, Carl Mock, a real favorite with the fans here in Houston, has checked in at center. David Carter has moved over to the left guard position on second and four. Ball at the Seattle 25. Stabler will give it to Campbell again. Stabler on third and three. Play action fake. He's got Kenny Burrow. Touchdown. Oh. reception by double zero his section touchdown pass of the day one more time over John Harris too who misjudged the football he could have come back and I believe broken this up watch 44 you see there well he turned around I don't believe he saw uh, Burroughs coming at all but that was a great catch you are absolutely right Mike 24 yards on the catch and touchdown it's not a bad day's work to kick the extra point. It is up. It is good. And now the Oilers offense. Lethargic a week ago against the Cincinnati Bengals have come to life. They lead 28-10. We're in the fourth quarter. The Seahawks are going for it on fourth. And one with 10.36 to remain in the ball game, down 18 points. Ball's at their own 23-yard line. And the crowd again up on his feet. Jordan will throw. Out to David Hughes. Did he get enough for the first down? And was he down? No, he the did not make it. He was. Again, a big play by Carter Hartwick, number 36, who already has an interception on the afternoon. First and 10 Oilers at the Seattle 24, and they give it to the main man, Earl Campbell. Second down and six at the Seattle 20. Oilers lead 28-10, 9.50 to go here in the fourth. Campbell breaks loose again into the Seattle secondary. Yeah, but Campbell is going to run it in, Mike. Here he goes again. 
amazing performance. Campbell again cuts it back on first and ten at the 12. Campbell inside the four down to about the two and a half. Now, this is a great job by the center and the two guards. Watch this hole open up. Mock on the middle linebacker. And you can't stop Earl Campbell if you try to tackle him from the side. Oilers now inside the Seahawk, too. I think everyone in the Astrodome knows who's going to carry the ball. Campbell dragged down from behind by Manu Tuiasa Sopo, number 74. Now, I think Campbell is the only team he has not gained 100 yards against in his career has been the Pittsburgh Steelers. Campbell. That establishes a new personal record for Earl Campbell for carries in a football game, 39, 187 yards. And as I said, one time he looks dead tired, they give him the ball the next time, breaks two tackles into the end zone. 34-10 now, Fritch on to make it 35-10. This game has gotten out of hand. He is perfect thus far this season, and he is perfect again. To this point in the ball game, Earl Campbell over the last two games has now carried the ball 75 times for an excess of 400 yards. Avon Riley there to make the stop, and the that message board here in the Astrodome tells the story. I was wrong in my arithmetic. He has carried the ball now in the last two games 75 times for, I believe, 369 yards. That's a season for a lot of guys. Keep it up, Earl. Jimmy Zorn has been replaced at quarterback for the Seahawks. Number 12, Steve Atkins, a five-year man out of Wichita State, has replaced him. Atkins does not get much work, as his career statistics indicate. Dan Dornick and Eric Lane in as running backs for the Seahawks. Atkins going for Largent. Bumped out of bounds, but not until he had the first down, and now the referee rules that he was out of bounds. No reception. Atkins to throw on second and ten in big trouble. Scrambles out of it. Has got the first down across the 40-yard line at the 40. Carter Hartwig there, number 36. 6-14 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter. Atkins finds Mark McGrath. Inside Houston territory to 49. That's Tony Kubek and Joe Garagiola and Shannon's Rabin. That is Dick Enberg and Tom Seaver in the vet in Philadelphia. Atkins now rolls to his left. He's open. Largent, touchdown. Great play, Largent. Steve Largent records his third touchdown of the season. But the Seattle Seahawks have recorded in the fourth quarter, 1981. Great job by Sam Atkins. Rolling against the way you'd normally think a right-handed quarterback would, but larger turns completely around. Herrera converts the extra point to narrow the margin to 18 once again, but little time remains. 5-18 here to go in the fourth. Oilers by 18. With Campbell, Burrow, and Stabler on the sideline earning a well-deserved break, the Oilers kept the Seahawks from scoring and ran out the clock. What an incredible performance by awesome Earl Campbell.